Okay, class. Uh, we'll start off with class uh, 12, I do believe it is here. Straight out. Um, keeping gold miners in the background or gold rush in the background today. Using that as my little bit of inspiration to uh, muon or neutrino this thing when it comes up. So uh, today I figured we would actually go ahead and get into what's, what uh, A1 is. Uh, really we haven't talked about much math. We might have put some up there. We talk about how electron volts and uh, um, the delta times B aspect gives us volts, gives us this monopole electromagnetism bit of things. But I wanted to go a different route about this morning, again psychologically. And explicitly on the table today, I, I feel I've been preparing for something of this nature for a long time, not necessarily indirect ref, a reflection of anything on the board, but more likely that there's an underlying X that I'm very close to with the material. Uh, caught up in a rabbit trap, these invisible strings and things that go around the world. And so I, I brought up a couple of notes this morning. I was watching Como's, uh, Governor Como's, their response efforts and talking about leveling curves. He brought up some graphs, but obviously there is no no numbers with those graphs. It's, uh, it's a much more complicated cubic structure, if you will, with a bunch of slices. And it, it takes a required amount of physical time to actually process that material. And before, or uh, immediately after that, when I put the... Uh, this uh, young officer, I do believe is what she was, or uh, a helicopter pilot at least in the Army, and they're given big parts for it. And of course, they're recruiting right now. There's a need for it. And I've always had a play for integrating the prison military variation. I'm trying to work a little bit of that. As much as the overall education to improve the ability of what the ASVAP represents by local home cases. All right, so that's the first little bit you got to recognize. And I, and I say that with the helicopter pilot, and I call her Jaeger, because if you watch my floor manager's training technique, this is basically a skid steer. Now, she's up in there, and it looks real tight, and maybe I was a little fast on the full inspection of what the, the uh, skid steer is and that site management, but essentially, this is a Jaeger behavior. I'm not talking about it because it's a skid steer or a helicopter. Often in those videos, you'll see me look at the company and say, Jaeger or old blue, she's got some charm in terms of that. This is the V at the top of that particle passing through here, given myself and any uh, inverted calculus numbers that reflect the entire company. Remember, this is a Jaeger. To move this with that force requires half my brain to understand what the company's design for this is and my physical actions to represent through that. So it's not just the safety checks. It's not just getting through here. That's the job. So let's begin with this concept. Now, in, in my field theory, my universal field theory, socket wrenches, not unified. Um, the stone mill and mathematics as a whole are not directly synonymous with each other by the perception of what these problems represent. And there's a reason they call them the STEM millennium math problems and they're worth what they're worth because you should be able to build a class with this material at any point in time. Universal field theory, prefix. Encoded in this guide, you'll find the base of A mechanics, the process used to break down or build anything and everything. To this concept, A refers to the relative frames of reference in A mechanics. With that said, we must start with A frame, A frame. A frame of or to motion. We want a frame that says this thing is a snapshot of it, or I need the depicted model of that snapshot has velocities, has speeds, has an angle over the ground, something of that effect. Uh, and in this guide, we'll begin with the concepts of seed, stem, and swag to help us understand other concepts of A mechanic. So let me reflect that again with A frame of or to motion. This is not a ball concept. A helicopter, a skid steer, a position is something that is of motion or to the motions that you're about to travel in. 
and balls in an FMA process work the same way. We'll be building more into this. This this is a topic we're going to have to delve into because it's the schematics of the overhead position. Uh, you see the skid steer and the buckets. You always look at them like this from a two-dimensional object. But these are drawn in such a way that I can see other tangible timelines of the operation. What do you do with the scale house? What do you do with these buckets over here and they have to go in a totally different direction? And this is an, uh, an idea of uh, erodes, an abruptly long sequence of terms, or uh, 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 a sequence of terms that ends abruptly. You know, skid steer place and helicopter. What is the action that you can do with a helicopter? Is that the only action? No, clearly there are directions and topography, X, Y, Z problems in general relativity we have to delve into. C33 in terms of the levels of first order, second order, and third order operations in this wave function. Because it's essentially a helicopter. It's, it is a solid, solid object, but what in terms of its function at the thing requires this plan. And then that plan gives you a straight line to that distance, which is geodesically understood. And we'll get back to that AX principle in something like Fermat's or Beale's and why graphing it is absolutely critical because it's not necessarily grafting this is what that action took there's cost to it that goes into a timeline that'll reflect some other system later and you'll start to begin to build your entire matrix so a c space of exact energy design whether it be the stone mill or this bedroom there are spaces they have exact numbers they have a, a distinct distinctive cost picking up that rock via picking up a feather and uh, design you know there's multiple angles in which you can view or calculate this to that'll have the same result in numbers like I, I can teach off of that uh, skid steer bay or those four containers and I could say inside of here you're doing a veneer of this aspect so you have a different number count inside of here and that's that would be the design for that graders not necessarily a full grader or an operator or manager. That's Beals, AX plus BY equals CZ. We'll get into that later. Uh, B, STEM, uh, scientific, or excuse me, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Let's go back to A for a moment. What's the difference between science and technology, definitionally wise? What's the difference between technology and engineering? And what's the difference between engineering and mathematics? In a space of exact energy design, what becomes the term psychology is the science. I'm using the tools in which psychology defines the technology of physics, where this bunny's going to be, what the FMA design of this is, and how to engineer the housing of that, whether it's to confine that energy or be in front of it for an aspect, the FMA. It's moving in this direction. I have to go here at this speed or plan accordingly to that thing running around the earth this many times and when it should be there. That's the calculus on that. And uh, again, that's science, technology, engineering, and the mathematics. I'm making the observation. That's a science. This form of that science for that object moving that speed becomes a technology. Other numbers of FMA ball don't necessarily apply, but they do in the regards that that's the science of this technology. They're one and the same. Later on, AX stuff and BX stuff is going to help you out with this. Uh, engineering, again, when you say technology and engineering, that becomes a science. And so they're constantly matrixing over each other, just like any words in a combination encoded in this guide will find where it could go. Uh, base, you could say the, uh, the overlying functions of things. Realistically, the depicted model is to condense that information in that prefix. And swag, of course. This is scientific wild ass guess. And if you ever met a, snow, a sniper dealing with windage, and generally why I talk about the 50 cal particle slit experiment, wave functions over here, the high propagation of that's where that's going to be, the sniper has to move. Now, of course, if that particle is moving through here constantly, that closes off the window, unless you're going to shoot through the wall. Obviously, with a 50 cal, you might be able to do that, but obviously, this person walking through this window and then walking through this window give me a timeline of the high percentage line that's where the middle arc is going to be and that's what windages come next you know the distance over that function um and and it's not a military concept 
it's a uh, it's a standard concept. It's just at a high level with very enriched, abrupt, long sequences of this A B uh, A A X plus B X and uh, A Y or A X plus B Y systematics for that sniper realistically. So it becomes a high level of computation in that field, given the pressures and gravity and gradients that apply the action to the correct function under loyalty and things like that. And you always do this in the stone mill. This is your job. So that 50 cal particle slit experiment is you're a rational number. Your kind of ability to, in chemistry they talk about it as a, a, a density difference while separating hydroscopic alcohol or it's something, uh, it's hydro, it, alcohol is hydroscopic. So when you're starting to distill the difference, when that clear drop hits into a clear volume, there'll be very distinct with, distinct density differences. It'll look like, well, why does that give you all those swirly lines that kind of look like air or heat waves on a day? That's an operator bar. That means to tell me that when I start to see that, and it's clear and obvious to me relative to the first, first few drops that weren't, in this solution that the density difference I have to change out beakers otherwise my 99% rubbing alcohol is going to not be 99% rubbing alcohol based on the process that says run it that irrational number right there correlates to Celsius degrees and that become the calculus points and you can write those things down this density difference and then the temperature radically increases after that point that's that scientific wild ass guess. That's that windage in this effect. And later on, we can use uh, absorbing beads for the water uh, in, in the rubbing alcohol to pull out any additional water that's in there and it becomes another operation or try to distill it again. Depends on you. The terms you will see above will not only be very important uh, in the future as you read this guide and also in life, um, help you grasp uh, them well enough. However, in order to truly understand them, we're going to have to add a few things to this first. The first thing I did here is I just threw up like a regular equation, and it's in parentheses, capital A equals F equals MA equals F1 plus or minus, and I close this off, the irrational number of being equal to F2. You know, we're saying that what makes F1 a ball in motion was this entire picture that we viewed in motion comparatively to this snapshot of, oh, that had a that was 40 feet high, you threw that ball. And uh, there's an arc, you know, how, how, how high, given the, the weight of a baseball, does a, an air cannon have to shoot that thing up there? Well, that's the irrational number, plus or minus an F2 but it's in a physical operation. What we do here is to say motion one, gravity equals M1 plus M2 over R squared. And so we're just taking that radiant, we're applying it with geodesic functions and timelines and quantum operators that'll, that allow this to do, and essentially that's all gonna zero out. You know, it doesn't free up the energy, it just allows me to understand that energy so I can uh, pi, if you like, uh, equals one. And what we're talking about is a line here and it's total distance back, which doubles that off. But this is only one function that applies to a zero state. When I prep my station, it's because I know the timelines of bucket turns. And so I'm basically taking that line and I'm saying I'm going to run that physics through this when I'm stepping that up to make that as efficient as possible. Um, we're going to close this off with the first few at least. Um, erodes conjecture on mathematics pro uh, progression. This is an A abruptly long sequence, which we'll get more into in a moment. Uh, Fermat's last theorem, AX plus BX. Beal's conjecture, AX plus BY equals CZ. Ying's Beal's mask app. We'll talk about what that looks like in a little bit more mathematical detail. The P versus NP problem. Organization of college students. Universal field theories in the stone mill. Uh, which job detail be, again, the organization of, well, if I make him the cobble guy and he's all this, he's going to be super diversified. And it's not that it's not possible, but this organization of operations on the stone mill, how Old Salty does it in the drill sergeant house, it's like, <laughs> you might have social problems. And, and in college, they do this with like, well, this person, you know, they pay the money, but they're racist, so putting them in a box with this is just high risk. Over there, that's a different game. 
Brick and Dryer's uh, Conjecture, uh, Physics of Common Sense, uh, Ryman's Hypothesis is another one. We'll get to that one later, a lot about number theory and grid bits. So I'm going to continue this. I'll catch you on the next one.